day, it's Ingus from IJS Electronics and today we're gonna continue with a Schneider Electric ATV 312 drive and as we looked in the last video how to set all basic parameters for the motor and basically get the drive going, try the drive uh, in a local mode but today we're going to interlock uh, uh, running a drive into remote mode and uh, we're going to be trialing today two functions we'll look at some parameters how to get from point to point and uh, and then we're going to try a uh, two types of wiring which is going to be two wire and a three wire wiring and and, and but those are the most common things that most of the drives use we quickly go through through, through some ios and uh, that's pretty much will be it for to get this go, drive going in a remote mode and for the video we're going to be using a uh, potentiometer which is a 2.2 kilo ohm for this type of uh, drive I'm going to be using something like this it's uh, manufactured by a Siemens uh, it's a 22 millimeter cutout uh, potentiometer fits exactly into a standard 22 millimeter uh, cutout stations and uh, it's a really good at the fact that this is already fully uh, pretty safe with all the knob and things like that and uh, and it's got screw terminals on the back so you can really quickly and easily connect and get your things going so uh, let me prep first for the two wire uh, wiring and uh, we'll see how that works Okay, now that we have uh, wired uh, the potentiometer and the two wire system in, let me quickly run you through what each terminal groups do. Just zoom in a little bit. So to quickly run through it, so this block in here, this is these are the relays. They can be uh, programmed to what they do in 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 the system. These are the the um, uh, analog uh, outputs and there's one analog input is down here but this down here you can have a voltage output and current output and another uh, uh, analog uh, input down there both of them and this and down here it's another analog input which again uh, is, is it's for, for basic for main potentiometer and things like that but you can have a different preset speeds and things like that you can use all sorts of things down here to uh, play with but which I'm not going to go into too deep so basically this would be uh, more analog inputs and, and down here these will be the uh, digital inputs and there they go all the way to L6 and I believe L5 and L6 is not even programmed to do anything so these are all can be used and programmed to whatever way which uh, whichever way you want and sort of give you a sort of idea what it can do let me just zoom out uh, there's sort of a a whole massive page where you can pre-program these inputs to do and as you can see down there on the side you can see the factory settings but these every single input starting from L1 to L6 can be uh, programmed to whichever uh, whatever you want to do but for today we are only looking on the basics which are factory settings and uh, that's all we are going to be looking at so uh, as you can see my potentiometer is wired in again it's a 2.2 kilo ohm uh it's a, they're designed and manufactured by siemens absolutely top quality product and then and, and it works absolute treat and uh down and uh down here we have wired in a small station just just basic uh get start get going thing uh, with the uh, it's, it's sort of an e-stop just to by quickly be able to stop the driver unless you have all the other equipment that I have down there to protect it just to have some sort of minimum way of doing that so basically you just you click the click the start and you turn the potentiometer and you just close the door so so with the potentiometer you can see let me just zoom in a little bit more oh don't worry so, and by clicking e-stop, it sort of removes the removes the power from the uh, logic input one and stops the drive. So quickly show as well that the inputs down here. Just zoom in. 
So it was, it's, it's looks, I'm not sure it's even visible. Maybe it would be visible if you get closer. It says down here. It shows a 24 volt out and then you can say L1, L2, L3, L4, 5 and 6 is all down here and each one of them uh, can be doing different things. For the manifold preset is the L1 is a forward and the L2 is a reverse. And that is pretty much how you are you know, regarding the potentiometer. Touch. The basic potentiometer goes uh, one wire, wire one goes into the comb and then the middle one will go in A1 and a plus 10. If by any chance uh, you didn't, your, your potentiometer is not performing the way you want it to do, which means the wires have not been wired in correctly. Just keep swapping around until you get your desired uh, uh, point. Usually, I mean, the desired uh, uh, way that needs, it, it needs to be working, especially when it goes in direction which way you turn, which if you, go, if you turn clockwise, you would uh, expect the drive speed to go up. If it doesn't, then it, then it goes other way, you just swap the wires between. Uh, a com and a plus 10 and then and you definitely get the a1 correctly as well but again if something doesn't work it means the wiring is not correct but that's pretty much potentiometer and in this position if you really look at in this position i've got 24 volts coming in into my uh stop down here goes through my stop yeah, it goes normally close contact goes to the normally open and sort of goes back and then and sort of uh, loops up with the L1. That's just all this. You basically just loop things together and that way you can uh, start things up and Oop, I've got my yeast up in. So that's very much it with the nice little uh, potential with that. You can do the controls and you can put that in, in any this type of uh, potentiometer. I know it's big, but it becomes a bit pricey price tag. I think it's just like 30 or 40 quid, but it's 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 for the lifetime. And then uh, let me just shut this off. Obviously, this one has got a fan which is a bit noisy, but uh, again, this thing fits in, in any uh, M22 uh, cutouts, so basically, uh, normal panel cutouts which are standard 22 mil like these, and it can be fitted in anything without uh, messing around too much with uh, uh, getting things fi uh, fitted properly. We've got a nice gripper down here which completely expands and locks into the place, it's just perfect. So uh, so now that we've looked at the two wire system, let me get this up running in oh, quickly to show that how you jump between a wiring system or not. That. Wiring systems, let me just, you basically need to select, in the, in the default mode there's always going to be in a two wire system, but to go from uh, uh, two wire to three wire, just go to IELTS, which is self-explanatory, you want to change configuration to IOs you click uh, whatever that is ECC or T or whatever and then uh, click it again it says in here it says down there is 2C and for the next one we want to be a 3C oh, let me just and we hold it yeah accepted it and we escape and we are ready to wire things into oh okay because 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 we still have the old wiring in here it doesn't like the system, so I need to take that off in a minute. So, uh, that is that. Let me get wired in the three wire system and show you how that works. Right there, now that we have uh, wired up into the three wire system, this is what it sort of looks like. I sort of added a bit of a, a addition, so I uh, didn't put any labels on it. So, uh, I basically using this button as a, a reverse and this button as a forward you can always put a stick just to just to uh, stick things into so show some uh, input programming as well we can do so uh, at the moment this is how it uh, looks and obviously the potentiometer oh, that thing. Oh, potentiometer stays the same same wiring same everything so uh, piece in here and uh, then we can then we use a sort of a connection. So I know it's a bit messy, but I'll talk you through in a minute how that's been done. The two wire system, a three wire system, basically allows you to start uh, drive and latch the latch the input, and 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 and, and then uh, by clicking the stop, it will delatch the input, pretty much like a normal the DOL uh, online starter. So uh, the wiring is it's it's fairly straightforward. I'll quickly show you the small diagram. This is where you can get from uh, down here, you can see down there. 
control command a three wire it looks like that and sort of run you through in a minute how that works in a uh, buttons so 24 volts will come out and it joins uh, this side oh, will come out and it joins this side this side uh, one side of the uh, blocks so then you can see down there uh, they are all oh, zoom in they're all sort of joined up into into connections, and then because because he's looking for the for the for the for the normally closed signal, which which in our case, once you change the inputs around, we are sending uh, the one that goes through normally closed back to L1. So that sort of closes that section, and will remove the error from the screen. Uh, straight away, saying that he's got uh, that uh, stop part of it, and then basically after that, it's just sending the uh, start uh, according to whichever inputs you're using. Uh, the start when it's pushed it will go to L1 and reverse when it's pushed it will go to uh, uh, no, sorry, L2 uh, and then, then it's gonna go to L3 in our case like now when the 3 wire system changed the L1 has became as a stop part and uh, L2 and L3 has become as a forward and reverse respectively so uh, that's pretty much how it, uh, how it is wired and uh, it looks like and what wiring to use again quickly run you through one more time uh, let me zoom out so the 24 volts which is on the board says 24 volt comes to one side of the board connects up to all the blocks the middle block is the normally closed block which is our stop block so from there from the stop block it goes back to L1 and then the start goes to L2 and the reverse goes to L3 so all of them sort of has a, a way of sending signal back to the drive and how that works very simple just click the start if you let's say we go for this start the drive goes one way stop and drive will go the other way stop and both obviously using the same potentiometer so let's start and pretty much that is it to get this drive going into remote mode obviously there is let me shut so many many different smart things this drive has is a fairly fairly very well advanced drive and it has a huge amount of capabilities there's so much to explore but if you're looking just to basically get your motor going start the drive and some sort of basic speed controls and things like that to put in place that's all you really need to do obviously if there's more like different uh, there like you want to lose like two or three or maybe even four different types of speed there's so many functions down here you can use the you use these relays down here for all sorts of uh, fault diagnostics and all the other things like that what you want to do with it there's uh, all your outputs for the current and then and, and, and for the volts and there's three different inputs for the for the for the analogs and things like that. there's so much you can play with it and then it's a very very well designed drive very well built the menu is a little bit, a little bit hard, at the beginning hard to get your head around, but once you do and understand those groups, you're pretty much good to go. And other than that, overall, I would class at this ATV312 family it drives pretty, pretty good drives, and I would definitely recommend them. So, uh, if you got one of these, you're in for a treat because they do run and last for a long time. So uh, that's pretty much it what I, what I will cover from this type of family. I'll be looking into different types, other different, different type, other families into Schneider Electric. So, but for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.